three. Who was written about 
thousands of years before he was born. He was written about in the very first of the first book of yes. the Bible. Yes. That's 6,000 years, over 6,000 years ago. Yes. And this one was written about there, that he would certainly come and do many things. Oh, I know some people say the Bible is just not real. It's just a book thought up by some man to fool people. When we hear that, we must remember that they speak out of ignorance and not truth. Sometimes I have a hard time remembering that because I see and hear so much ignorance. In this electronic age when we can speak into an instrument here and be heard around the world and even out of this world. When those up on the space station can turn on their cameras and audio and we can see them live and in person. Yeah. And they can do the same. When we had that great forest fires out west, and all those homes and all those forests were burning. Those up in the space station sent us photos of pictures that showed that light of the fire on the West Coast. <coughs> yes. We're living in a time where we can get on a train or a plane and just go with a ship, go where we want to. They are building trains to go faster and faster and faster. And every year, more and more are running off their tracks. But it's amazing. In this age of greatness in knowledge and understanding, that we have so many ignorant people walking about. Mm -hmm. I see people on Facebook and from their writings and, and they think they know so much. And I sit there and think, you ignorant people, you know nothing except a lie. Right. Everybody's got an opinion. Very few have the truth. That's right. When you think about it, how could all of this be possible without one supreme being who is over everything? And by definition, that one supreme being who's over everything would have to be Almighty God. Look what David said here about this Lord. He said, He gives me many benefits. He forgives our iniquities. And that word iniquities means our perverse, evil thoughts and actions. He redeems our life from destruction. He engulfs us with love and mercy. He feeds us with good things and allows us to be refreshed and renewed so we keep going. Then he also heals all our diseases, which is our subject today. As I said, the majority of the message this morning will be the actual scriptures from the Bible. And it will be that taken from the AKJV, the Authorized King James Version. That's right. Amen. And the reason for that is I still believe that of all the versions, versions on, the, on the planet, that this is still the overall most, most accurate one. I know that sometimes the wording is difficult to understand without study time. Maybe that's the reason God tells us to study. Yes, come on. And we look for easier ways to, <coughs> to say it. And in our search for more common language, we have lost a lot of meaning of the scripture in some of these versions. That's the reason some people and some churches are doing such things in the world today. Because they have versions of the Bible that don't forbid it. 
And there's nothing wrong with reading these verses. I've said many times. You ought to have other versions you can read and see what it says. But when you want really what's going on, take the King James. I ordered me a Bible this week. I finally found it. Sometimes you'll hear me in our Bible studies talk about, uh, let, me, let me say that from the Bible in basic English. And everybody wonders, what is that version? Nobody can find it. Why? Because it's out of print. It's been out of print for years. I have an electronic version on my computer. And I love to read it. It's so simple. And yet, whenever I read it, I still verify what's said by what's in the King James. And I've been wanting one. I wanted one of the actual Bibles for, for years now. And I finally found one on the internet. It says it's in very good shape. It said the cover's not damaged at all. And I'm looking forward. I got an email yesterday that says it's ship. And I'm looking so forward to that. And, 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 and it will probably be the one I start to go with to be my one I read from normally. And when King James puts it a little different, I think needs to be said, I'll say that. It's, it's paperback. And I'm going to have it leather bound so it'll last longer. But unless I change my mind or God changes my mind, that will be the Bible that I will carry into the pulpit. Because it says so, so simply. And I, and I hate it. I, I, I regret that it's not available for people to get today. And this thing is based from a time when we did not have the many, many words in the English language we have today. It was written using the basic English language without all those words all those new words that we've come up with and yet it says the scriptures so simply and so purely that it's easy to understand well I gotta go on that's not the message first of all this morning what does healing our diseases mean it says here he healeth all thy diseases. What does that mean? Well, it's important for you to understand that. That word healeth here in the Hebrew is the word rapha rapha. Or some call rapha rapha. And the word means to cure, to cause to heal, physician, repair, and thoroughly made whole. That's what David was saying here. Interestingly, that word stems from a root word, which is just rafa. One rafa, not two. And that word means to slacken, to fail, to be faint, to be feeble, to forsake, idle, let alone, be slack, be softened, be weak, or weakened. Before we learn in math that a double negative gives you a positive, David already knew that. The Hebrews already knew that. So the word rafa, which is a negative, with all the bad, all the sickness, all the disease, all the turmoil, all the hurt, the word rafa rafa. Is put against that and makes it a positive. A double negative makes a positive. It still does in, in poor grammar. We often die, we often hear people say, we probably say it ourselves sometimes, I ain't got no. We say that, I've heard that a lot. Well, I ain't got no actually means I do have so. Because it's double negative. Ain't got no means does have so. <laughs> so when we say ain't got no, we're, we're telling a lie. What we mean, we don't have any, but what we're saying is we do have some. That's why we shouldn't say I ain't got no. You should say I do not have any if we don't have any. Well, go on. This is not English though. All simply means whole, whatsoever, whosoever. 
It means leaving nothing out. All our diseases. There's nothing that can come against man that God cannot heal. He's not hindered. He's not handicapped. It means the whole system healed. I'll be through with the introduction just a minute. We're going to get the scripture. That word means to be the whole system healed. Today we have doctors of osteopathy. These doctors of osteopathy, they practice somatic treatment. That is the whole body or person, not just, just the alien part. If you go in with a bad toe, they will they want to they want to treat your whole body. Of course, most doctors today are not that. Most doctors are specialists. One doctor does not treat your sore finger. Now they have three specialists. Three specialists. Each one of the digits, there's a digit, there's a digit, there's a digit. Each finger has three digits. And now, rather than having one doctor treat our whole body, we have three doctors treating one finger. <laughs> so instead of paying one doctor, we pay three specialists and go home with a hurting finger. <laughs> David says, Dr. Jesus is an ever digit, ever cause, ever need doctor. He specializes in everything. Come on. Richard wants everything. It means anything that can come against a human being, Jesus specializes in taking care of it. Amen. Doesn't matter what it is. Amen. So let's look at the scriptures. First of all, what does the New Testament say about Jesus the healer? Matthew 4, 23 and 24 says this. By the way, if you want a copy of all these scriptures, I'll run you off a copy of it. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people, that were there with divers being in many assorted diseases and torments and those that were possessed of the devils and those that were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them not just their physical ailments but the whole person Jesus practices somatic medicine he heals the whole person and that's what's important. Matthew 8, 16. But, he, but when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Wow. There was no incurable disease in Jesus. Matthew 19, 2. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Matthew 21, 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Luke 9, 11. This is the last one. I can go on, but this is the last one. And the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them and spoke unto them with the kingdom of God and healed them that needed healing. Wow. That's what God's word which is infallible, it cannot fail. There's no error in it. There's nothing, no, nothing negative in it. It's all positive, the Word of God. That's what the Bible says about Jesus. Now, what does the Bible say about the apostles? What did Jesus tell them, and what did they do? Listen to this. Matthew 10, 5, 6, 7, and 8. These 12, the 12 apostles, including Judas. This is before the betrayal. 
These are the 12 that Jesus had called, including the one that was the devil. These 12 apostles Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of Gentiles and in any city of Samaritan do you not. But go ye there rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That was the Jews first. The gospel had to come to Jews first. And as you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is this. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freedom you have received. Freely give. These are not twelve angels from heaven. These are not twelve prophets of the Old Testament. These are twelve ordinary men living in that time. And one of them was even an evil traitor. But he did it. Why? Because it's not the preacher, the teacher, or the evangelist. It's God that does it. And God does it under the individual. He honors his word. That's right. When do you win that? What did the apostles do? Mark 6, Mark 6, 13. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil, many that were sick and healed them. Over the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 11. As the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch of the so-called Solomon's porch, greatly wondering. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches that at the, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Well, God moved with these 12 men in such a mighty way that the people got so much confidence they believed that even Peter walking by that his shadow would heal the sick. And it did. I don't have time to read all that. Acts 5, 16. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk, sick folk with them. And them that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they, 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 they were healed, every one. Not just the physical sick, but the mental sick, the emotional sick, the, the, the all kind of sick that a person can be. Acts 8, 7. For unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with him, and many taken with palsies, and they were lame, but they were healed. Acts 14, 9. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay, lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux. To whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Verse 9, so when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. And Jesus did it. The apostles did it. The early church did it. Now let me kind of regroup here a little bit and, and, and clarify and qualify. Jesus did it because he's God. Yes. The apostles did it because they had the faith to follow God and obey God. The early church did it because they had the faith to follow God and his word. You get a, you get a theme here? You see a theme? Finally, what does the Bible say about today? <clears throat> well, that was all fine. That's thousands of years ago. What about today? Does the Bible have anything to say about the church today? About Christians today? And I want to say before we look at these that God did not give the early church and the early Christians anything that he hasn't given us. Right. Not in the Bible. And none of it will pass away until the end of time. Acts chapter 5 verse 15. 
and so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. <coughs> At least the shadow of Peter passed them by. Not overshadow them. I just read that. I want to read it again. Then came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing their sick folk. And then were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. <coughs> Folks, this is the New Testament church. Acts 28, 26, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hear and you shall hear. And for the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, hear, eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, that I should heal them. Wow. God says, all these people running around making excuses. Well, the Bible's just another book. It's not. The church is an individual. It's not. The church is a gathering yes. of believers. An individual believer is simply that. An individual believer. And all these folks get on Facebook and claim... <coughs> They're the church. They're a lie. That's a lie of the devil. They are not the church. No, they are individual people. Well, we got to move on. Acts 28, 26. And go unto this people and say, Here, let us Acts 28, 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, that they will hear it. We're the Gentiles. Whatever is in the gospel, it's for us. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I don't have much left. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, 8, 9. But the manifestation of the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, is given unto every man, every human, to profit with all. Paul, the great preacher to the Gentiles, says... The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every human being who becomes a born-again believer, child of God, a Christian, that we might profit in all. For to one is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. But all these working together, that one is self saved spirit, dividing to every man severely as he will. And the word man there means he would be. And then finally, James, the brother of Jesus. Speaking to the church, giving the church what he had learned from his half brother, Jesus, as an apostle. He says, any among you afflicted, let them pray. Mm -hmm. Is any merry, let him sing songs. There's a time for praying, there's a time for singing. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Who are the elders of the church? The elders of the church and those mature enough in church do what God says. And believe that's the elders. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Not the elders, not the preacher, not the teacher. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall rise and raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. That is the message of God on Jesus the healer. That's what we can believe. That's not what I said. It's not what Old Roberts said. It's not what Charles Stanley said. It's not what the Baptists say or the Methodists say. This is what thus saith God Amen. in His Word. Amen. I'm very aware that there are a lot of preachers and pastors that preach the healing today. It's been given to physicians and hospitals. 
basically, basically taken from the church. I believe with all my heart that's a lie of Satan. That's totally wrong and it's not pleasing to God. Have there been and are there still fakes in the world? Yes. So what? They're fakes in everything. Aren't they? Whatever we name, there's fakes in them. Some people like to fake. But where does that come from? It comes from Satan. He's got to fake for every good thing God does. He's the great faker. And those who fake it are following him. Oh, they get mad when I say that, but it's the truth. There is never a reason to forsake or disavow the word of God. Never. No matter what the circumstances. But we do that. We leave it out. We disavow it. Because we don't want to cause any trouble. Then we go home and turn our television on and the devil's cries causing all kind of trouble everywhere. But we don't want to be guilty of causing trouble. One of the reasons that churches are not popular anymore. One of the reasons that some people only flock to the church because they get a babysitter for their children is that the church is not causing trouble. <coughs> in the community. I saw another case yesterday where somebody put on there looking for a church. Got to meet these qualifications. Got to have a lot of water. Got to have this. Got to have that. Got to be warm. Got to be friendly. Got to be loving. There it came. Bam, 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 bam. Church after 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 church. Finally, I put in there, sounds like you're looking for a church without people. I don't think we have one in this county. Well, they ignored that. They just kept on church after church after church after church. That just makes me sick. Linda said, well, they're proud of the church. I said, well, that's good. Aren't you proud of your church? I said, yes, I am. But I'm not going out here claiming that we meet all the people's wants and desires. I said, I'm thinking about making me a false Facebook ID. I've learned how to do that. I give myself to somebody else, John Glenn or something. And putting on there, new to the area, Looking for a church where when the people meet, they pray. Looking for a church where the people meet, they sing. Looking for a church where the Sunday school teaches the word of God is the true word and anything else is a lie. Looking for a church where the preacher will fill a pulpit and preach thus saith the Lord God, whether we like it or not. Looking for a church where me and my family can serve and be of service so we can be the teachers, we can be the leaders, we can reach out to the community, we can do all this work for our Lord. We're looking for a church where we can be like the apostles. How many will we get? No. Somebody said, now this has got to be a what do they call them? Robot or something? This has got to be fake. <laughs> Nobody has to work in church. That's why they leave church. <laughs> Bring your money down here. We'll pay somebody to do it. You don't have to do it. We don't want to work in church anymore. I say we were talking about people in general. We want everything to be provided in general. And we talk about a good church. In most cases, that's what we need. And every one of those without exception said, and our preacher preaches the word. 
All this said, the church is not preaching the word. And every one of those said their preacher preaches the word. Some of them I didn't know. Some of them I do know. Yes, they preach the word. But the question is not do we preach the word. The question is do we live the word. Do our members live the word. Is it okay by God for us to skip church because we were celebrating Black Friday? I don't think so. I don't think so. Is it okay for us to skip church because it was a pretty weekend we wanted to go to the beach? I don't think so. Is it all right for us not to want to be a worker in the church because we want to give everybody else the opportunity? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Are we to go about trying to get every sick person in the world healed? No, Jesus didn't do that. Not at all. Matter of fact, one place Jesus said Jesus went, he couldn't hardly do anything over there except he healed a few sick folks. Not the multitude, just healed a few of them. So if there were places like that then, there's going to be places like that now. Because Jesus could not only heal, he could walk on water. I can't heal nor walk on water. What are we to do? We're to believe God in all that he says. And when we pray for healing of whatever kind it might be, we are to have faith and believe God will grant it. If I get on my sick bed and my deathbed, if you can't come and pray for me, believing God's going to heal me and help me, don't come pray for me. I don't want it. Don't want it. The only prayers I want from me and my family are those that give it in faith and trust in God. That's the kind of faith. Preacher, have you seen him? Oh, yeah, I've seen him. What have you seen him? Well, I've seen him in the Methodist church. I've seen him in the Pentecostal church. I've seen him in the Baptist church. I've seen him in the tents. I've seen him in auditoriums where people believed. Yes. And God stepped up and did the healing. Lunatics, maniacs, possessed by devil. All kind of divers, many sort of diseases, all of them. Jesus is the healer. I hope that you go forth today believing that. That Jesus is still the healer. Now I don't find anywhere in the Bible where the Bible forbids us to go to doctors. That's garbage. That's garbage. And I don't think parents should be allowed to withhold medical treatment to sick children because they say they want to have the faith. Preacher, you want to guess what you believe, no? A doctor can examine them and if God's going to heal his other prayer, he's going to do it no matter who examines. Or what medicine they take. But when Jesus went into that city, a lot of sick people didn't get healed. There's a lot of things involved in it. At the very top of the list is God's will. And God has an appointed time for all of us. And also, God has a a system of action and reaction. And when we do things that are dangerous and we get harmed by it, that's not necessarily God's will to get harmed. That's God's will not stepping in and going against natural reaction. If you swim out in the ocean too far and you get weak and you sink to the bottom of the ocean, you're going to drown. You're not supposed to do that. And if you catch pneumonia, don't go to the doctor. 
you're probably going to die. Because you need to go to the doctor. That man was bleeding on the brain. That's bad enough for an 80-year-old man. But to have pneumonia? When I made Linda get up and I took her in the emergency room in the hospital, they told me if I hadn't brought her, if I'd have waited until the afternoon, she'd have been dead. They said, she's got to go in ICU. I never dreamed she was that sick. What if I'd have said, I'm going to run out here and get you some Alka Seltzer Plus? <coughs> Made her take it and then sit there and let her die. I've never given myself. But I tell you this, when they were in there working with her, I wasn't sitting on their body. I was praying. I even visited that chapel at the hospital and I prayed for my wife. And I don't care whether it was my prayers or the doctor's medicine, I'm glad she got well. Amen. And back with her. There's an old saying. Live like everything depends on God. But work like everything depends on us. That's God's way. Will you stand with me for the blessing? Lift your hand for the blessing, Lord.